Welcome to Artificial Social Life, the research program which adapts artificial life modeling techniques to questions of social science. The broad aim of this research is to see if fundamental social structures and collective behaviors can be made to emerge from the interaction of individual agents operating under simple local rules, rules that place only bounded demands on each individual's information and computational capacity. In short, we wish to grow the collective structures from the bottom up. For example, can sustainable agriculture as a mode of production be made to emerge from simple local rules? Staying with economics, we can grow artificial markets and explore how departures from textbook assumptions affect their performance. When we do this, important questions are raised about the reliability of markets for handling the long-term global sustainability problems of concern to the 2050 project. The general adaptive agents approach pioneered at the Santa Fe Institute is to be distinguished from traditional top-down modeling. Artificial social life exploits object-oriented programming prominent in modern computer science. Object-oriented programming provides the technology for implementing our adaptive agents in software. Part 1. Life and Death on the Sugarscape In this version of Artificial Social Life, events unfold on a sugarscape with two peaks, one in the southwest and one in the northeast. At every point, there is a sugar score. The sugar score is highest at the peaks and falls off in a series of terraces. Just as there is an initial distribution of sugar, there is an initial spatial distribution of agents. Some agents are born high on the sugar scape near the peaks of the sugar mountains. Others are born in the sugar badlands where sugar scores are very low. Each agent has a genetic endowment that includes a sugar metabolism, a vision, a speed, a stomach capacity, and a maximum lifetime. Later we will discuss other genetics. For the moment, you may think of their color as indicating their sex. The agent's metabolism is simply the amount of sugar he or she burns per step or iteration. Metabolisms are randomly distributed across agents and range from one to five sugars per artificial day. In turn, vision is randomly distributed across agents with values ranging from one to ten. So agents with vision six can see six units in the four lattice directions, north, south, east, and west. Agents lack diagonal vision. For each agent, the rule of behavior is as follows. From all lattice positions within your vision, select the nearest unoccupied position of maximum sugar Go there and eat the sugar. And here's what happens. The individuals are following a very simple local rule, but clearly the collective behavior is quite complex. All the while, agents are accumulating wealth, measured, of course, in sugar. And so, at any time, there's a distribution of wealth in society. In many human societies, wealth is observed to be highly skewed. At the turn of the century, the economist Pareto observed that a particular distribution obtained in several societies. It would certainly be interesting if the famous Pareto distribution were to emerge from our artificial society. Here, to track the distribution of wealth, we will show the so-called histogram of wealth animated over time. Along the horizontal axis is the range of individual wealth in society divided into ten bins. The vertical axis gives the number of agents falling into the bin in question. What we see is that while the distribution of wealth starts out symmetrical, it ends up highly skewed with a few extremely wealthy individuals and a huge mass of poor ones. Could it be that a log-log plot of this distribution will conform to Pareto's law? Here's the answer. Not only do we get a line like Pareto, but our slope is about minus 1.6 which is amazingly close to Pareto's minus 1.5.
In the sciences of complexity, we would call this Pareto distribution an emergent structure, a stable, macroscopic, or aggregate pattern induced by the purely local interaction of the agents. Since it emerged from the bottom up, we point to it as an example of self-organization. Left to their own strictly local devices, the agents somehow achieve a collective structuring of some sort. Understanding how simple local rules give rise to collective structure is a central goal of the sciences of complexity. As we will frequently observe, such understanding would have fundamental implications for policy. For example, if, as some have claimed, this highly skewed wealth distribution is really an immutable law of nature, there's no legitimate hope of equity in society. Tools like artificial social life let us explore just how immutable the distribution is. We can adjust local rules, like those concerning private property or perhaps inheritance, and see if the same global pattern in fact emerges. Such experiments can call basic assumptions into question and pose testable hypotheses of social concern. The Pareto wealth distribution is one example of an emergent structure. We now turn to another, this one spatial in nature. Rather than the random initial distribution of agents on the sugar scape, suppose they are initially clustered in a dense block. How will the block start affect the dynamics? Surprisingly, we see a succession of coherent waves. The leading edge of agents proceed to the best unoccupied sugar square within their vision. This leaves a bald zone where they had been. The agents behind them must wait until the bald spot grows back before they have any incentive under our rule to move to those lattice points, and so on for the agents behind them, hence the series of waves. The diagonal direction in which they propagate is even more interesting. Recall that the individual agent can only move north, south, east, or west, yet the collective wave is clearly moving northeast, a heading totally unavailable to the individual. Here, the local rule precludes individual behavior mimicking the collective behavior. This is a characteristic of emergent phenomena. As a third example of macro behavior patterns arising from simple local rules, let's see if our agents can migrate with the seasons. First, to create artificial seasons, we split the familiar sugarscape into a north and a south. For the opening season, the sugar scape grows back at unit rate in the north and at one-eighth that rate in the south. It's bloom season in the north and drought in the south. Then, after 50 cycles, the situation is reversed. The seasons change. Again, the agents operating under the same simple local rule exhibit collective behavior far more complex and far more realistic than we had expected. Yes, we get migrators, but we also get hibernators. The high-vision, high-metabolism, or bird-like creatures migrate, while the low-vision, low-metabolism, or bear-like creatures hibernate. We can give a sustainability interpretation to these migration dynamics. Each time drought sets in, a large body of agents migrate to the other region of the sugarscape. In effect, they are environmental refugees. An environmental catastrophe has struck their zone, and they flood into the other zone. In part two below, we will introduce combat between agents and will show that its intensity can grow sharply when competition for resources becomes severe. An influx of environmental refugees suddenly boosts the agent density in the receiving zone and, naturally, competition for sugar intensifies dramatically. Artificial social life suggests, therefore, that environmental degradation can have serious security implications, an important political point to which we will return. These exercises make clear that a wide range of collective structures and collective patterns of behavior can emerge from the spatio-temporal interaction of agents operating individually under simple local rules. Indeed, only one rule has been used, and it's about as primitive a rule as we could construct. Paraphrasing, it amounts to the instruction, look around and go eat the best sugar that's free. And yet, all sorts of unexpected things emerge from the interaction of these agents. 
basic principles like the existence of environmental carrying capacities, famous statistical regularities like the Pareto Law, coherent group structures like waves that move in directions unavailable to the individuals, and biological processes like hibernation and migration, all from the same simple rule. Of course, in this exposition, we presented the simple rule before executing any sim simulations. We might have proceeded differently. Imagine that we had begun the entire discussion by simply running some animation displaying a buzz of agents hiving the sugar mountains, and that we had then bluntly asked, what's happening? Would you have guessed the actual simple rule? We don't think we'd have been able to divine it, but that really is all that's happening. Isn't it just possible that something comparably simple is all that's happening in other complex systems like stock markets or political systems? As social scientists, this is the problem we normally confront. We observe the complex collective already emerged behavior, and we seek simple local rules of individual behavior that could generate it. Artificial social life can function as a kind of laboratory where we grow certain fundamental social structures in silico, thereby revealing micromechanisms that can generate the macro structures of interest. Thank you.